I guess is like being uh, family friendly a concern at all? Because I don't know, we're not like that in the actual game. No, not at all. <laughs> not not in the slightest. Yeah. Okay. So, hello everyone. My name is Billy Howe, and this here. Brandon Shaw. All right. Nice to see everybody. Um, we are from Knights at the Not So Round Table. That's N I G H T S. Uh, this podcast is pretty much intended for our Twitch stream. Uh, we also have VODs on YouTube, Nights at the Not So Round Table on YouTube, and then on Twitch, that's Night at the Not So Round Table. Uh, it's not plural. Like I said, though, the podcast is for our stream, so sometimes we'll be talking about things that are happening in there. Uh, we've had current campaigns. We've probably all been playing D&D together for, what, four years now? Yeah, give or take. Yeah, Shab got me into it uh, with, the, with the starter with the starter game, uh, which was not how we intended it or thought it was going to turn out, but it did turn out pretty well. something spectacular. Yes, it did. We have a lot of fun with it. So, um, for the most part, it's just going to be a lot of us BSing and talking about D&D, so essentially just a lot of BSing. Um, there are eight players, or going to be eight players. We're kind of in the works of getting two more people to come on, but we do have six currently in our campaign. Um... Our campaign, essentially, if you want to try to explain it from, like, the character perspective of, like, how you see, you know, the whole world and everything. The world itself is Zaxria, but, like, the plot, like, how everything goes from the character side. Alright. So, the characters all came to what was known as the Keep, Mm -hmm. to become the Keepers of Zaxria, the, like, the big title, I guess, the, Mm -hmm. the big role of... Individual, a long line of individuals who have helped pr- protect the people of Zaxria and yep. guard it from who knows what. Right. And, and currently, you guys are the fifth generation. Yes. Yep. Although current, my character currently is not a keeper. Yeah, not but a keeper. That's not, not even like, honorary yet. Yeah. But we'll we'll figure uh, all that out. He's fresh. But watch the vods yeah. on YouTube, and you will understand. So from the beginning, the everyone arrived at the keep, and for the first about year or so of the game Mm -hmm. was the characters learning to become keepers Mm -hmm. and honing on on their skills their teamwork right and kind of competing with other people that are also trying to become keepers Mm -hmm. and obviously in the end from you might be able to see why we're where they are now they did become the keepers Mm -hmm. they proved themselves to be the most qualified heroes to join right and you were like a misfit kind of group too like there were i believe you were regiments originally. There were five yeah. different regiments, right? Mm-hmm. And then one of them was, like, compromised of all wizards. One of them was compromised of all fighters. One was, like, all rangers. And they had, like, beast pets. And then all of you guys are just this smattering yeah, of whatever the hell is going. Group. Yeah, exactly. Wildly different backgrounds and mm-hmm. different races and mm-hmm. some odds and ends that you might not see in official D&D No, games. definitely not. Our, our campaign also, that's probably a good disclaimer, is... Very, very homebrew. There is not mm-hmm. a lot going on in that. That is, I think, so our characters currently, there's six, right? So we've got Orem, played by Shaddy, who's the dwarf cleric. What, he's T- Tempest Domain? Yeah. Right? Tempest Domain, which that's all, that's the only character in the entire yeah. thing that has base rules to him. Uh, Ander, played by my brother Jared, who is a halfling card master. Cardmaster is a homebrew me and him came up with. Uh, Brian, who's my cousin, plays uh, Warforge Paladin. His oath is a homebrew oath. It's like an oath of protection. Um, Jerry, who plays our sorcerer in the group. Some sort of cosmological uh, type of thing. He found that. That's a homebrew he found through Pinterest. Mm -hmm. And then Deleuze, Brandon Deleuze, plays a Bengaran Shaman, which are both homebrewed by me, the Shaman and the Bengaran. If people find interest in it and anybody sees this, feel free to reach out and ask for it. I will send you in the direction of looking at it. Pretty cool uh, little thing there. Uh, and then the characters you had, Gorak was... Gorak, Gorak was like base rules. Yeah, he was by the book. Yeah. Uh, Goliath Barbarian, yeah. right? Yeah. Goliath Barbarian, Path of... Uh, what was it? I can't remember the name of it. Berserker, maybe? No, it was no, the, the no, beast it was one. No, it was the beast one. The totem. The totem, totem warrior. Totem warrior. Warrior. Yeah, that's the one that it was. And then um, your character after that he was... He ended up falling in battle. Yeah, he did die. And after he 
left the party or no, died I guess yeah, <laughs> like the a better party. term yeah, yeah. <laughs> unfortunate exit yeah um, my next character came in after um, a few months well actually I had the ranger that came to the keep which wasn't homebrew but it wasn't like official it was the revised ranger yeah and the unearthed arcana right but I didn't end up sticking with him and then my next character after that was more homebrew that was the rogue that was shadow who mm -hmm. was on the stream yeah uh, he was on the stream recent in streams the, in the first episodes and uh he was a kanara which is also homebrew the yeah so the like bengar and are like cat like like large like tiger or like lion or panther or something mm -hmm. and then the flip side of it yeah more like the wolf kind of kind of aspect of that right and the homebrew rogue archetype was a shadow rogue. Mm -hmm. they didn't really come up with a specific name, but the gist of it was they he could control shadows yeah, and manipulate them, manipulate them yeah. and kind of like a nightcrawler type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then after he also died, that yeah, was yeah, he had an unfortunate yeah. death recently yeah. in the campaign. Mm -hmm. But uh, now the party has run into a mysterious man named Apex. Yes, who we're not going to delve too much into because. They don't know very much about him, but essentially, if you kind of want to explain, like, just top layer, like what he is, okay. like race, no, no uh, class info, just yeah. race, his so, a little bit of his background. He's a human that comes from a southern part of Azash. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was. Did we say the what the name of the tribe was? Uh, Do Saranaman. Okay, so he, him in, yeah. he did mention the king mentioned it. Yeah, he did. Okay, because you're like a very important. You're very important to Azash, and Azash mm -hmm. being um, this continent that is compromised of like primarily Bengaran individuals. It's like a heavily like kind of rainforest, kind of jungle type of atmosphere that's there. Um, and then the king kind of just now. Like, currently, like, watching episode, I think, 9 and 10 is where you just came in at the end. It was, like, the end, the mm -hmm. tail end of 9, and then you were there for 10. So, like, it's you're just now being introduced to the group. And essentially what brought you to the group was the king is, like, which we can't delve too much into why exactly the king needs it done. But the nice. king needs him to be brought to the main continent for reasons... Uh, that are of essentially like life and death to the people of Azash, uh, just because of how important your tribe is to this mm -hmm. kind of uh, effect in the game. So right now they they really have no idea what you're like focus in combat. Yeah. What, what did you do against the Raptors? Yeah, he was hiding in the bushes. <laughs> just yeah. hiding, shaking. Yeah, he's shaking the bushes. Uh -huh. Came out trying to look like a hero, so he didn't look like a total jackass. But yeah, I think you. I think they said. Uh, they were like, "What? So, what do you do, or whatever?" And you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm like, I'm a real capable fighter. You know, like I'm all right. I can yeah. handle myself." And mm -hmm. the king was like, "Yes, he very well can handle himself." First encounter <laughs> in a bush, yes. hiding, shaking. So the RP has been like really cool with that too, mm -hmm. and like even right now, explaining like kind of like yeah. where everybody's at. We're currently in a what looks like the home of a. Very large and formidable beast known mm -hmm. as Warshaza. Mm -hmm. And she, well, we uh, went in there without her knowing, and now she's home. Yep. So we're kind of caught up in a little pickle here and, right. and not sure what we're going to do. Yeah. And some of us are trying to run, like Apex. Yeah. Uh, someone might be in the mouth of Warshaza at the moment. Like Skip. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's quite a. We're in quite the situation here, and yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the keepers handle it. Yeah, which will be on the on the stream. This not the not, well today is Easter, so we mm -hmm. we didn't really have a session. Me and Chuck just kind of got together through this first episode together to kind of just you know bullshit back and forth, mm -hmm. talk about what's going on, try to get this right. rolling, and figure out all the bumps and you know get through everything. And then next Sunday, which will be what the twenty eighth, right? Is today the twenty first? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it'll be, 28th. 28th. Yeah. it'll be the 28th next week so the 28th of April at 3.30 you guys can check out the, the stream just kind of look at that this will be up on YouTube to watch and then there will also be a you know podcast through whatever site I can manage to try to find it on still mm -hmm. trying to work everything out uh, we pretty much just like love the game that we play and yeah. have just been trying to like 
share it with people essentially is what the the hope for all of this is mm-hmm. it wasn't even really like a hope like let's do this and get super famous and like no. popular and like rake in all this like money which i'm not worried about any of that shit at all no. it's more like we love all of this stuff that we have and everybody's like backgrounds and we have a lot of fun playing together so it's like you know that's essentially what D is you know just getting together with your your boys playing yeah. some D, and then we wanted to just share that with everybody and see what everybody else thought and with the shaman for me like you kind of made a little bit of a like a class you know messing around with current stuff and things that you've made before right yeah. so like when you make like a homebrew kind of class it's very it's kind of like my baby <laughs> and like when we started this campaign it's been through several changes just from like play testing and stuff and we're not com- number crunchers by any means like we do not we don't really look too much into that i was literally just telling you the other day when we were talking like brian for some reason can't do math and brian i'm sorry like i I don't trust your your math when you're counting your your damage all the time but i know you're close enough so it's like yeah okay like i get it go ahead do it it's not about how much you roll it's about how you like how you do it you know if you describe how you're going to attack or maybe you finish the monster off and you do a ton of damage so it's like yeah cool whatever have that moment Mm -hmm. Cause that's what it's about for me not like all the number crunching stuff so you know i'm not dogging number crunchers in any way either i'm just saying you know kind of comes with the a, nature of being a heavily homebrewed game yeah uh, we're, not we're, we're not game designers no not by any so means. i mean we're not working on at wizards and r&d no. and stuff so none of us have any background like that now we're just doing what we love and mm-hmm. trying to put our heart into making fun stuff for us right yeah, and other people to just kind of consume and, you know, like and fall in love with and even give us feedback on, you know, quite, like, nice feedback. I don't need yeah. someone tearing into me telling me that we're terrible and need to be following rules a certain way because <laughs> that's, yeah. not, that's not what we're here for. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's other D&D streams if you want to be the... Yeah, if you want to troll, go there. The hardcore yeah. metagaming and there are, stuff. Yeah, there are tons of other really good streams that, that do a lot of, like, good number crunching and stuff and know a lot more than I do. Like, I've only been doing this for three to four years, like we said, like, mm-hmm. DMing and stuff. And, you know, Shaw just kind of handed that mantle to me when we first started because we did... I don't even remember what the starter set's called. I can't... Like, off the top oh, of my head, I can't think about it. Yeah, but what what was, like, the premise of it? Like, when you... Well, you got through, like, the kind of the first scenario, which was, like, yeah. the, you were, like, transporting goods from one from point A to point B. Yeah. And there was a little goblin ambush. Mm-hmm. And then the guy he went off to try and find the goblins in another cave. Right. And then uh, and we kind of went through the cave and everything, and that was about as far as we got. Because mm-hmm. we're also trying to figure out how to play the game. Right. We literally had no <laughs> idea. Like, I had heard of D&D before. Like, yeah, someone, like, mentioned it or something. I can't remember. Like, I just... It's just one of those things that just kind of goes... You go through life and hear yeah. about. Like, you don't really delve too far into it. And then you're like, hey, you want to come over and play Dungeons & Dragons? And I was like, sure, I guess. Because you get me into stuff all the time and end up liking it. Like, yeah. all of my... Like, my nerdy side comes out from, like, you bringing all of that stuff out between, like, Warhammer mm-hmm. and, you know, War Machine Now and, like, D&D and all these board games and stuff. So I was like, sure, why not? And then we went over there, and you felt yeah. like you totally bombed, like, oh, DMing was, it. It but, was rough. But the thing is, we had, me and Jared had a lot of fun. Like, I went home, and me and Jared, I don't even know if he remembers, but when we went home, I was just question after question. I was like, dude, like, do you remember, like, when this kind of thing happened? I was like, I wonder if you could do this. I wonder if you could do that. I wonder if this is, like, allowed. And then when I realized, like, yeah, like, do what you want, man. I was right. like, okay, we're in. Like, this is what I'm doing. And then not too this. long after we started our, like, first kind of campaign with us, which was just me, you, Jared, and Brian. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't remember how long it lasted. It wasn't too long. It wasn't long. too long, but there was, like, a lot of shit that happened. Yeah. Like, I had, like, we played, like, five to seven hours at a time when we were doing that. Like, yeah. we were just in it. We were just like, yep, go, 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 go. Like, we didn't want to stop playing. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, oh, shit, like, you know, Brian's got school tomorrow, or, like, Jared's got school tomorrow, or, like, oh, man, I got to go to work tomorrow, or, like, we've got class. So it was like, okay, we got to kind of cut this down, like, stop for now. Mm-hmm. And we were like, I think it was all, like, I had it all drawn up on just, like, a piece of paper, and then I was doing, like, all of the scenarios through paint, like, figuring out, like, 
I put like drew traps yeah. and stuff and was like, "Do you see this?" and like had everything behind and we did like a little Caesar's box for the DM screen and then put yeah. like papers that I glued yeah, on the inside. Found out pictures of what yeah. we thought our characters would look like. Right, found character pictures. You played the very first session. Very first. It was, was a, a ranger. ranger. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was. Oh, 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 Orion. Yeah. Like, that's right. Yeah. That was one of my favorite moments of all D and D was sneaking around a house and causing some some trouble being stealthy and stuff yeah and that too was completely like unplanned yeah. and i feel like every time we have those moments those are the best moments oh, yeah. you use like wasn't it like a trophy yeah like, it was like a, a bear head or yeah, something an animal trophy yeah and you were trying to sneak in to find i think it was getting like a key yeah or you were getting a, a letter or something it was a letter because the the dwarf he was like the mayor mm-hmm. essentially of this like little dwarven town that was near this mine and you were trying to gain passage or somewhere in a some it was so long ago yeah. but like i just remember very distinctly like me like draw pretty much drawing this house as you were trying to go through it and mm-hmm. i'm sitting there thinking like oh shit like oh shit i didn't do any of this yeah. so i was like okay I'm, this is the main floor and i like drew a couch and then you were like okay i'm like hide under the couch yeah. like okay roll a stealth check it was good you took under the couch the butler's walking around and then mm-hmm. you jump out put like this bear head in there and he was like screaming like mm-hmm. freaking out yeah that was i do vividly remember all of that and then um for that campaign like you said i don't even know how long it lasted yeah. it I couldn't have been too long no because I don't really have too much recollection of a ton of plot. Yeah, there wasn't too much happened. going on in that. Because I remember, I think we played for a little bit, and then I I didn't, like, scrap it and say, like, okay, like, I don't want to do that. But it was just, like, more people wanted to play. So I was like, okay, let's just start a new campaign. Yeah. Because that just seemed to make more sense than trying to, like, have everybody just jump in out of nowhere. Because for me, like, trying to think, like, we have a lot of times, like, over the campaigns we've had people, like, kind of leave, people come in. People believe we've kind of just now started to really establish a group. So before it was always me trying to figure out like, okay, how do I get this person in? Or how do I make this person leave and let it kind of roll and fit with the story at the same time? Mm-hmm. So when we did the second campaign, you guys all, st- I can't even remember where you guys started out for that one. Wow. Yeah. I don't, yeah. That's crazy. The only the part, the earliest part I remember is being a part of the town which yeah. I don't even remember the name of. Yeah, that's just insane. When we had like a house outside of it. Yeah. Not too far. Like an mm-hmm. hour, a couple hours walk. Yeah. West, I, I think it was Westfield. Westfield. It's like the, the whole country. Right. Yep. And then the king gave you guys like a mm-hmm. little bit of land there. And you guys had a house and everything. And that was like really cool. Like having, that was like the first time we messed around with like players having like a little bit of a stronghold in a mm-hmm. way. Just from like watching Critical Role and seeing like Grayskull Keep, and it was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, they have somewhere they call home they can go to, and the way that they, like, want to do their rooms and stuff is really cool, so that was fun doing that. And then that lasted for a little while. You had, yeah. we had, it was you, Brian, Jared, Shaddy came in for a little bit. Yeah, he was as a, I think he was fighter. A, uh, yeah, orc, half orc fighter. And then. Black Rock. Black Rock, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we always, <laughs> it was called Black Cock. Yeah. I don't know why that was. We thought we were hilarious. And then after that, there was a little bit of time where you had your other friend Austin. Austin, and, and, Austin his. and his girlfriend both came on mm-hmm. for a little bit. He was like a rogue. She was like a druid. Just for like two sessions, I think. And if that didn't last super long, but it was yeah. still fun. It was still fun. Yeah. And he kept, like, taking livers. Kidneys. Like, yeah, kidneys. Yeah, that's what it was. Stealing he kidneys. He was just, like, carving into the backs of people, yeah. like, taking kidneys. It's very brutal. Yeah. And it wasn't even, like, you guys weren't, like, heroes no. in that campaign. There was no, like, good and bad. It was just, like, this kind of seems like the right thing to do, so let's do it. Mm-hmm. I feel like there may have been some, like, questionable things every now and then that you guys may have done that I just kind of, like, like slipped past my mind. I was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And then... The third campaign we had. This was like the, f- the first one major this. one. Yeah, this was the first major one. That one lasted about a year, I think. Yeah. Pretty close. Was it over a year? Probably Maybe a little, less? Probably, probably a little over, I'd say. Yeah. It seems really long, so I would imagine it was over a year. Yeah. Oh, well, there was a lot is. in it. Like, yeah. not, not that there it seemed a, long. Like it was, right, but like the campaign just mm-hmm. had so much in it that there's mm-hmm. no way we covered yeah. it in less time than a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was with Jerry, Brandon... 
Shaw. Pretty you, much everyone yeah. we mentioned. Everyone but Shaddy. Shaddy yeah. wasn't in it. Mm-hmm. Um, also in the campaign we have currently, we had another uh, player, Devin, who just recently left to start like kind of doing his own thing. He's like a comedian, artist. He draws all this other crazy shit. So very he was talented been, man. Yeah, very, very talented, funny man. Uh, he played a half-elf. Originally started as a bard. Uh, just because of like him as a person, you just kind of recommended like, dude, yeah. like every class I'm thinking of, like this fits you. Yeah, like there's no way you can. Uh, play he he was fairly new to D and D at this point. He, yeah, he was playing a little bit with his friends. Right, and then he kind of like jumped into the the big big league, not the big leagues. That's yeah, but yeah, there's way over here, but like right a different style. Right, it was just more a RP game. heavy. Yeah, right. They play like really funny. Like his his character was like a druid. And I can't remember what their name was, but essentially he had a bunch of brothers and they were all like flavors of Dr. Pepper or something. Like it was just yeah. like a really gag, like funny uh, kind of thing. I really wish I could have saw some of their stuff because I feel like I would have laughed my ass off yeah. at some of the shit they did. For but sure. like, like Sean was saying, like ours is a lot more RP heavy and there's like a really, really structured story to it that I delve really in. Like I love doing that shit because when I was younger, me and Jared would always be out back with, like, Brian and our other cousins and play, like, war games and all sorts of other shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is That's probably Jared. Nope, it's James. Ugh, what? I got your keys and I put three gallons of gas in your car. Just put it in my room. All right. <laughs> my brother. See, we're still working out the kinks mm-hmm. of this, so uh, don't mind that. But anyways... Um, what was I saying? This is like more like when we mm. were younger. I was always very, very like trying to find some sort of a medium to get all this creativity and stuff out because I loved like medieval fantasy, sci fi fantasy. I wasn't like too huge into when I was younger, but I was just like huge with medieval fantasy. So when I found D&D, I was like, holy shit. Yeah, you jumped into the DM chair real, yeah. real nicely. Yeah, I, I loved doing it too. Like, I was just like, okay, this is what we're doing. Like, I'm jumping right into it. Like, I, I got an idea, guys. Like, if we can do this, and especially watching Critical Role, that was, like, huge. Yeah, that was, like, the, so, that was the inspiration to getting started. Yeah. Because <clears throat> that's oh. why I found D&D to start mm-hmm. watching the stream. Yeah. I was like, wow, this is... How did you even come amazing. across that? I just saw it. I was on Twitch. Mm-hmm. I was looking through the different, like, games and stuff available, and Dungeons & Dragons was at, like, the top of the viewer count. Like, mm-hmm. right behind, like, League of Legends. Hmm. I was like... Dungeons and Dragons has like twenty thousand viewers. What is going on here? <laughs> right. And I just looked at the stream, and they were just like having a good time, and right. they were telling a interesting story, and mm-hmm. I was like, wow, you know, this seems like something cool. right. we could really enjoy. Yeah. And I bought the starter set, and that all took uh, off from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then, when we started doing that, the campaign, like, like I said, like we just kept kind of jumping around. So now, where we're at. Like, it just seems like everything is starting to come together in a way, if that makes sense. Like, all the mm-hmm. players, like, everybody seems like they really want to be at the table. Everybody has a lot of fun every week. Like, we can only do, you know, four or five hours every now and then, though, because everybody gets busy and stuff and can't show up sometimes. But I really wanted to start getting into this and, like, recording it. And even if not for, like, a bunch of people, like me, like, I love having this stuff. I'll sit in my room and mm-hmm. turn on an episode in the background and just be sitting there listening to it, like, right. laughing my ass off at funny shit that goes on. Like, if you watch some of the stream, like, there are, like, little lull moments and stuff, obviously, because it's just the nature it's of natural, D&D. Yeah. yeah. You can't really just always be like, go, 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 go. And, like, for people that are really not familiar with D&D or people that even, like, play D&D a lot, like, kind of embrace those lull moments, too. Because, like, for me, every time you guys have stuff like that, I'm trying to sit there, I'm sitting back, and I'm thinking, like, okay, if they do this, I'm going to kind of do this. Like, I'm trying Mm -hmm. to plant those moments. I'm like, okay, I'm starting to plant stuff. And, like, even sometimes just try to come up with something that I feel like would be really cool and creative if it just popped up into the the game. Like, that's how uh, Matthias actually came to be in this campaign. Because you guys were just kind of, like, looking around for shops, and I was, like, just randomly, just popped in my head, I'm like, probably, like, some weird, kooky old dude that's just here for no reason. Yeah. Like, in this city full of Bengar, and just some kooky old dude that's here. And then the accent, when you guys walked in, I was just like, shit! And then yeah. I was like, oh, I'm sticking with the life. That was yeah. fantastic. Uh-huh. Some of these, the improv, 
yeah. characters are you like some of the oh best. those are those are my favorite who is the one from the last Vestuvius also kind of like a herbalism guy uh that's um, from this one Matthias uh Oscar I had planned I definitely planned Oscar I was telling you mm-hmm. uh Buck from Ice Age mm-hmm. <laughs> like that was my inspiration if you don't have kids or like anything <laughs> still watch Ice Age it's a great movie <laughs> But I put, that's how, like, life is for me now. Like, 50% of my thought goes towards my girlfriend. The other 50% is D&D. <laughs> like, that's yeah. how my life goes. I'm at work. I love my job. But at the same time, it's like there are other things that are just, like, so much more important to me just because without, like, having, like, friends and shit, like, none of that really matters too much. So, like, those Sundays, those are, like, my days. Like, I love being with everybody and just, like, hanging out, having, mm-hmm. like, a really good time and shit. Even if we have, like a little bit of a session that's just like okay like yeah we had a, a good time yeah it's like yeah that's better than me you know going out or doing something else on a sunday like that's just like that's like our sacred kind of thing on sunday that we do all the time yeah definitely a little bummed we're not we were playing this week but yeah excited to, uh, excited to jump back into where we left off yeah me too especially because i have so much shit planned that's the thing too is like having so much planned and it's like okay like let's go let's do this this week and then everyone's like ah i yeah. can't make it man and that's just the nature of life and i'm starting to kind of understand that i get a little frustrated sometimes though when people are like last minute like ah man i can't make it hmm. but it's like yeah whatever we'll we'll get right back at it next week guys yeah, we'll make it work yeah we always do all right just making sure that's still going like I said, we're still trying to figure out all these bumps and stuff. So I want to make sure that this is all... Qu- not, it's not going to be, like, top-of-the-line quality, but, you know, eventually if there's a little bit of notoriety to it, you know, people start, like, actually liking and listening and stuff, then, you know, mm. try to upgrade and stuff. I've already dropped way too much money on this than I should have, you know. <laughs> this is only a small portion yeah. of many. Yeah, this is not... <laughs> This is not what we only play with. I just figured it'd be a nice little backdrop. I forgot I had this bad boy back here. A little, little ASMR for yeah. you guys. A <laughs> little, little fizzle action. Man. And then I'm hoping, hoping, hoping that Brandon and Ashley play. That would be that'd be exciting. That would be cool because we have six right now. I feel like I could run with eight. And especially even having For eight, sure. like, the only thing that I don't like, like, I get that people can't show up sometimes, but the only thing that I don't like is, like, I can't focus fully on what I have to do if I have to pick up somebody's sheet and play for them in combat or something, mm-hmm. or, you know, if you guys have to focus on somebody else and play for them in combat. Like, that's that's kind of rough. Sometimes I just don't even want to deal with it, and I'm like, yeah, they're they're just teed out right now. <laughs> They're just sitting Lines here. T-pos. Yeah, they're just straight t pose right now. You know, they are inert. I remember mm-hmm. Skip, when Brian was going, he was trying to figure out his uh, schooling stuff for his diploma or GD. I can't remember what it was, but he just wasn't able to get there. And I was like, yeah, Skip's just inert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not dealing with this right now, guys. Like, the way this current arc was going, like, I was, it was like with Tenebris. Like, that whole Tenebris arc. Like, I was mm-hmm. trying to map out so much and, like, connect this to this. So it was like... I really can't try to focus on Skip right now. Even though Skip was, like, still there. Like, you guys would talk to him every now and then, and I'd be like, yeah, you know, uh, hello, good to see you. Mm. Like, very sentient, like, okay. But other than that, like, that's the only thing that kills me about people not showing up. So I feel like having Brandon and Ashley there would be really cool, because it's like, okay, there's more people here. We really don't have to focus too much on that. Like, hey, you, both of you, just kind of focus on that. Think of what you Mm want to do for combat next. And, like, for people, other DMs with big groups, kudos to you because it is it is really tough getting through combat sometimes just because there are so many of you and it's like... Yeah, it could take a while. Yeah. I feel like it's kind of on me a little bit more too because I'm trying... I'm not like telling you enough like, okay, like you're up next or, you know, you're after him so try to think of what you want to do. Ooh, excuse me. But then like you come up and it's your turn and then you're like, okay, like I know what I want to do and then you kind of have to almost feel like you have to do it fast so you don't really explain it too much and it's like ah well that's you're just rolling dice at that point and that's yeah. that's not great i definitely try to make combat a little more interesting by 
trying to explain yeah, that definitely character helps a lot. attacks and maneuvers and yeah. Even, things like that. Yeah, not just as a DM, but I feel like it helps your DM a lot when you kind of explain like how you're going to attack something. Mm -hmm. But I feel like as a player too, you immerse yourself a little more and get more out of it. Like it's like, yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna attack this guy. It's like, yeah, I figured you probably yeah. were gonna attack that guy. Like I could do your turn for you, buddy. <laughs> I just want you to explain, okay, like, for Skip, like, he's got a shield and a sword. He's very good at kind of explaining, like, okay, I'm going to do this. So mm -hmm. is Deleuze. Like, Deleuze will tell me every time. He's like, I'm going to take, you know, my Warhammer, slam it in his side, and then when he kind of curls over, hit him in the top of the head. Like, he really explains it. Explains how, like, the, the fire enhancements are on his Warhammers and stuff like that. He's a really good example with that. Like, mm -hmm. any characters that are having problems, just watch Deleuze on the stream. He's really good at explaining shit like that. And, like, you with, like, all of your, uh, Shrub's very adventurous in his kind of play style. He really likes to go with his character, like, what his character would do. So when it came to Shadow, you were very, like, in the, like, you know, in the background, in the shadow. Yeah. Not to be, like, a pun in any yeah. way, but you really, like, kind of clung to the back. And you really didn't, you know, it's not that you don't RP and, like, speak a lot, but as him, it just didn't seem necessary, so you didn't right. do it. But now it's, like... <laughs> with, yeah, with Apex, it's like you're, you're very different. Every, it's very, very different. different beast. Yeah. It's a good beast at that, though. I'm a fan. Yeah. I definitely like the uh, the contrast and changing it up and testing my role playability mm -hmm. with different types of characters. Right. Yeah. And that's like what's cool about DMing, too. It's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing that at the time. That seems like, like one of the best parts. Like, Oh, that's the, the, the absolute, my absolute favorite. It's, there's no monotony. Like, you break it up all the time. It's like, yeah, you guys have been in this town for a while. I'm going to just drop a new NPC yeah. on you because <laughs> you haven't seen this guy. Like, when you guys were in the keep, like, there's still six or so different people that were in there, you know, with the dean. Uh, and, like, with the dean, the dean is just pretty much this uh, staple for the keep. He pretty much built it with his brother has been around for centuries. He is human, but has magical means that have been keeping him alive. Uh, very, very strange. He's His brother essentially made it so he becomes a phoenix or has some sort of like phoenix blood in him. I'm not going to explain it too much because it does come up a little more in the like later on in the campaign, so I don't want to like ruin anything for anybody. But essentially he has some sort of a enhancement or transmutation to him that allows him to be a phoenix and is like reborn and rebirthed all the time keeps all of his knowledge and everything but with that he's able to keep this institute going and has been for the last you know five generations which has been a span of a century maybe a century and a half that has been going on uh so like that's mm -hmm. like i was saying like the dean's there siegfried was there uh master Fandel, or Professor Fandel, everybody was Professor, besides mm -hmm. Siegfried, Master of Arms, uh, Professor Windsor, Professor Fletcher, like, all those people were there, but then at times it was like, yeah, you know, you need this, so you're probably gonna go see this person, and you need this, so you're probably gonna go there, like, it kind mm -hmm. of got into this, which I really liked, too, though, because it kind of got into this flow where it was like, okay, you know, like, yeah, we we know what's going on around here, if there's a there's a kind of complacency and there's this normal to us so it's not like we're uh like you were just comfortable where you were and knew how things went so it felt really natural like you were immersed and knew what everything was it's like mm -hmm. you know i'm gonna go see nana Ann at the general store because you know i know that i need to go get this and that's where it's going to be so it was like you guys kind of made that your home essentially after being there in game for a year and a half to two years mm -hmm. so then it was like okay for for jared and wanted to kind of change what he was doing because essentially he was shit what was he at first was he was he a gunslinger at first he was a gunslinger at yeah. first yeah gunslinger which goes with his backstory and stuff which will kind of reveal itself more we're just going to try to have some intros and stuff made too so everybody can kind of look into those and like watch them and kind of just understand the characters a little more just little five minute snippets if that um mm. but for like uh roman Roman was the guy who introduced him to, like, the, the cards, and the card master gave him this magical deck, and was like, you know, do this, and kind of trained him and taught him with that. So, like, that was pretty cool, like, him changing classes. So yeah. I, like, threw Roman in there, because I was like, okay, you know, yeah, you're going to see the Dean. Yeah. What's new? <laughs> oh, you got this to do? What's new? And then I kind of, I kind of wanted it to, I knew when I did it at first, because, like, near the end, I'd imagine it kind of started to get a little boring at the keep, right? 
Well, yeah, it was a little bit. I wasn't there at the very end of the Keep storyline. Mm-hmm. But, so, yeah, some parts of it were kind of... It's, like, it's almost, like, drawn out in a yeah. way. Yeah. I wouldn't say, like, boring, no. but, like, it's, like, tedious, dumb thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it was like we were, act, like, kind of, the whole premise was we were at, like, a school, pretty much, learning. And yeah. that's kind of what it was, like, simulating in real life a little bit. Like, right. We were, like... Yeah, I think you were saying this is all real, way too real, yeah. man. Like, yeah. like, I have to go home and study after yeah. this. This is not cool, but yeah. I don't like this. <laughs> no. I'm already studying as it is. Mm-hmm. So. I don't need to be doing this shit no. more. We're good. So then, I wanted it to play out like that, you know? Like, so the back end of it, when it was like, you know, I was like, oh, we're at the keep, and you're up here. And mm-hmm. then it starts kind of like, okay, we've been at the keep for a little bit. And it's like, yeah, we're fuck this place. Almost, and then I was like, we want to graduate. Yes, we're keepers. <laughs> <laughs> then you graduate, and it's like, holy we're, shit, guys. We're like, seniors. The right world now. is ours, you mm-hmm. know? And then once you guys actually went out, the f- very first thing you guys did was what <laughs> wipe on the entire race were you around for that you were I, I came back in that was after that arc right tenebris yeah so tenebris was probably the very first major thing that was done um mm-hmm. jakar was jakar dreadhand was like this orc kind of chieftain who i thought you had run-ins with the dreadhand tribe that's how gorak actually uh died Mm-hmm. Was from being captured by them. Yeah. Um, Got him again, like, uh, really sickened by the wounds that he yeah. sustained. Right. And it was like, yeah, there's beyond, no way. Yeah, there's no, like medicinal here, no way. Yeah. Just like based on the resources that were had yeah. at the time. Everybody was like kind of low level. Um, Teneveth, which is like this uh, holy city that was like pretty much still in shambles from uh, the eradication, which is this kind of period where. Uh, and in our world, tieflings and half orcs uh, were a no go because they were like, uh, they had this, you know, with both of them, you know, tieflings have that kind of demonic bloodline in them, and then half orcs have that half orc to them, so there's that really brutish sense to them. Essentially, in our world, I just kind of made it so they uh, really embraced that kind of darker side. Like the tieflings mm-hmm. had brought demons and stuff during the eradication, and they were like acolytes to these, like, terrible devils and like demon lords and all this stuff and like really into all the layers of the nine hells and then when it came to the orcs they were all very brutish and with the dreadhand tribe and they would all you know massacre and pillage and do all this other savage like stuff so i was like okay those are two very different things that need to be dealt with and cannot be good in any means so everybody kind of looks down not wouldn't say looks down but like you know is afraid of and fears tieflings and orcs so i was like at the beginning of that i was like so you guys can do just about anything. Just try to be, you know, good in some capacity. And sorry, but you can't play half orcs or tieflings this campaign because for me this campaign is going to be a lot for me this time around. You know, because before it was like, okay, you can get away with just about anything. Like we'll figure it out. So then when it came to Drakkar, they pretty much got rid of him. There was like a little bit of time, and then I don't even remember how Tenebris first. I think came to fruition. It had something to do with Finn. It did have something to do with Finn. Like something in the vaults yeah. of the keep. Or something. Yes, Tenebris, uh, Finn. Who stumbled upon that room down there? It was Finn, Moldrak, and Connor. I think yeah. right. There's like a secret vault beneath the keep. It's like this doorway between two porches or something, and they found mm-hmm. it because Moldrak had sea invisibility on and was like walking around. Um, you guys got brought. They went down. Found this vault, all sorts of other crazy stuff. Um, Finn, long story short, was like, okay, I need to be stronger in order to defeat Jakar because he was pretty close with Gorak, like him and had him. They two, they had like a, a pretty good relationship, even though they were like two completely different people. They were just yeah. had like this bond to them. Gorak was uh, a Goliath. I don't know. If yeah, I that. think I, I might have, but yeah, he was just like this big dummy, Huge. big yeah. strong dummy. Yeah. And then when Finn was like, okay, like, Jakar needs to be rid of, I need to be stronger, looked for other means, ended up not finding the right means, stumbled upon really dark magic, and actually performed a ritual to release Tenebris back into the world. Tenebris being this uh, just shadowy, demonic beholder that was responsible for summoning and, like, bringing in a lot of demons for 
Erebos, who is also a homebrew god. Uh, there's a good amount of gods in the world that are homebrewed, uh, just because I, even though Shaddy's, Shaddy's, um, god is Moradin, mm -hmm. even though, like, Moradin's still there, there are, I think, maybe two or three gods that are, like, within the multiverse of D&D, &D. but there's a lot that I homebrewed just to make it, because everybody's really familiar with D&D, &D. so it's like, you know, yeah, we stumble upon this book of Moradin, and we read through it, or, like, yeah, the halfling is going to go look and find this book for Yandala, or it's like Umberly, like all these gods that are like really familiar, and like, it's like, okay, I'm going to mix it up, so when you guys come across something, you really have no fucking idea what it does, and then it kind of clicks a little mm. better, and it's like, okay, this is a little new, and that's really cool, like having to mix that up all the time, but then with Tenebris, you guys ended up defeating him, you had Shadow at the time, I believe, right? Yeah. Yeah, and that's where I was like, okay, like you're an honorary member of the Keep at this point. <laughs> Yeah. Shadow came in when they ventured to... Brunswick. Yeah. Yep. And he uh, was supposed to help them, I believe it was, deliver a package or something? like a. Yeah, pretty much smuggle yeah. into Venore. Venore being like the elven kingdom, uh, which is extremely hard to get into. There's like this rampant river, and then there's like one bridge that accesses... The entire redwoods because the elves are very isolated just due to the eradication they were like we don't want to deal with that shit so we're going to block ourselves off and make sure nobody gets over here unless they have the means to do so so then in grunswick the league of coin who's also like a really favorite npc of mine mm -hmm. uh leland huge inspiration from uh the walking dead for negan, negan yes and then that's where you kind of rolled in your yeah. shadow. That was a very, very uh, shady organization, and mm -hmm. shady business that was conducted. But yeah. It was uh, some of the keepers I don't think were proud of no, entirely. But, but it, it was, was like necessary. Yeah. They were trying to find uh, Malzerium, who was like this strong wizard who had originally put mm -hmm. Tenebris away, who was like in history uh, told that. Uh, Rynesk, who was this dragonborn paladin, just defeated Tenebris outright, you know, kind of vanquished him from the world. But the keep, you know, just as history is kind of like altered every now and then, they kind of twisted it in a way that made it look better for them. And, you know, there's this glorious group of heroes, so yeah, why wouldn't we do this? So, But the the real story behind it, after the dean had kind of divulged all the information, was like, nope, Nazarium is who actually did it. He has like a spell or knows of something that does something. And then that's when Shadow was, like, kind of starting to come into the group, and then... I think this was, like, the first time that they had some, like, really, like, moral questions within the party, because at mm -hmm. this point they've been trained to be heroes. Yeah. And now they're doing anti-hero stuff. Mm-hmm. So it was just, like, a little nice yeah. interaction. That yeah, and there. it was, like, essentially, like, your first decision, like, their first decisions as keepers, almost. Yeah. Like, their first big decision was, like, oh, shit, mm -hmm. like... What else do we do? And I do remember there being, like, a good length of time where it was, like... Like, I think it was, like, two sessions where everybody was on the fence. They were like, I really don't want to do this, guys. Like, there has to be something else. And then... Especially once we found out what the what was in the transport. Yeah. Which was... Essentially, it was the daughter of a very, very uh, wealthy grain lord. Like, uh, Edward Dumal or Duval. I can't remember. I said... Like, it's one of the two. It's either Duval or Jamal. I can't remember. It's in my notes. Boiled down to the very basics with no context. It was a human trafficking yeah. or run that the keepers had to do. Yep. And they were like, the the League of Coin was, um, wow, I can't think of the other group. You know what I'm talking about? I yeah. can't think of their like name. the entire town is... Yeah, it's kind just of like those. nothing but... Yeah, the entire city of Bamor is yeah. just all of these people. The Restless. Yeah. Yep. The Restless were just like this organization. It's just uh, always assassins watching. always watching. Yeah. Have people everywhere. The League of Coin, also a little bit of like a formidable force, but uh, more of like a brute force type of group than this kind of very, very... A strategic and tactical group of assassins like the restless are so when it came to when it came down to it you were supposed to bring uh it kind of got to this very very strange like 
three-way business interaction because it was like uh, for for uh, for Leland actually you guys were supposed to go to Bamor and find somebody that had wronged yeah. him yep and then yep. Bamor made us do the transport in order to get the information yep to find the guy yeah. yep and then you guys ended up doing it, uh, which was actually, I feel like, a big part of why Shadow stuck around, is because like he kind of saw like the good that they were doing, especially because this little girl, like Rosaline, she's no more than seven or so, and you know, you found out like it was probably not smart for them in Venore to like open the box and you know do what they had to do but they had to essentially do it because she had some sort of poison or uh, tonic that was making her in some sort of a coma and they had the antidote on the other side essentially so they took her out of the box gave it to her she comes back and you guys see this little girl that they're you know taking and everybody was just kind of at this standstill and everyone was like getting ready like no like we can't let this happen at all and Shadow and then, ran off to yeah. go find them mm-hmm. found them they were, yeah they were at this like Kind of what I thought of was like a old like sawmill or something like Essentially, that. Essentially, yeah, it's exactly what it was. And uh, kind of tracked him down, and got some intel, some numbers, and try to like bait him out a little bit mm-hmm. and wait for go back and tell the rest of the party, and they end up saving her, yeah, and bringing her back home to her dad, yeah, her father, yep. Which is a little tricky now. They were making jokes about it because Edward Dumal had something set up to where. You guys were pretty much gonna have like a, a an estate, you know, built and made for mm-hmm. like thanks for doing that for you know his daughter. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll see how that plays out too. Shadow sure, at that point was uh, kind of kind of wasn't like really looking to be a hero entirely. No, but it kind of just like something changed him in a little bit and kind of like felt good in a way. Yeah, because before that. I mean, I don't know how much we really want to go into backstory because there's still more that the characters could learn, potentially. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they will, but... More than likely, I mean, if anything, it's not going to be too revealing, but you can go into it as much as you want. Yes. So essentially he came from... Well, he wasn't born there, but for most of his life he came from the Shadow Plane. Mm -hmm. That's where he got his magic ability to manipulate shadows from. Mm Mm-hmm. And so he was never like really like a, a good guy. He was just trying to survive and mm-hmm. do what he could. And when he eventually got out with the help of a friend who taught him, he uh, started looking around for ways to get by in the world. Right. And that's how he ended up at like the League of Coin because yep. that's definitely a way to yep. make, make some money. And like he wasn't good or bad. He was just surviving essentially. Yeah. And the things that he had to do in order to survive were, you know, I guess. In his eyes, neither good nor bad. It was just necessary to do, you know, it was always him mm. or somebody else. And then once he got to the keepers, it was like, oh, you know, it's not just me or somebody else. Yeah. It's everybody else or nothing, mm. in a way. You know what I mean? And then, unfortunately, uh, as I kind of explained to everybody a lot before, like, this campaign's going to be not as lenient, a lot harder. Had just, just the current arc in the last, like, three three or four episodes, I think, for the yan kind of arc that was happening in Azash. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's, like, episode six or seven. I think it might be named, like, Slipping Up or something, where Shadow actually gets, like, captured from the mm-hmm. yan um, And then they found out, once they actually went and killed the, the yan leader and, you know, got rid of all of that, uh, that... Shadow was actually you know, dead. And then they were with these, like, Alpha Kanara at the time, too. I don't know if you saw the VODs or anything. Mm-hmm. But, Definitely. yeah, they the Alpha Kanara, like, brought him back to their uh, village that was there for, like, this proper burial and stuff, like a Kanara should mm-hmm. be, and, like, had a ceremony, you'd imagine, for him. And that was kind of like, okay, we're even. We're going to do this, you know, honorable thing for your friend, and you helped us be rid of this, you know, evil within our jungle. And the Alpha Kanara, they were not the most pleasant people. Um, but they were very mm-hmm. strong they were kind of like allies with the group at the time those were also like all in the VODs and stuff too so if that stuff sounds interesting like I said Knights at the Round Table on YouTube watch that stuff and then essentially you know this next Sunday we'll be right back at it yeah I'm like amped 
Yeah, we got the the maps all laid out. Yeah, we're we do filming have... where where the new location is. We're gonna be playing. This is mm-hmm. a totally different atmosphere. So yeah, this is the That's... first. Yeah, you will see (laughs) in the VODs and stuff. uh, We are, like, in my garage. Not right now in my garage. This is a room that we just kind of renovated and stuff and are able to play D&D in now. But in my garage is where we were before. So you'll see, like, stuff in the background and shit. But I figured, like, hey, you know, it's not really about where we're at. It's just about what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, So, like, there's going to be a lot of stuff, I'd imagine, that you see. And you're kind of like, eh, you know, like, that needs to be changed. So feel free to, like, comment on it and... Let us know, I'll, and subscribe away to everything, you know, like, follow, keep up to date. We also have a Twitter, it's also Knights at the Ra- Not So Round Table, um, N-I-G-H-T-S, by the way, it's not like a knight, although our logo is a knight. Did you see the logo yet? Yeah. That's pretty sweet, isn't it? Yeah, I yeah. yeah, Autumn, Autumn to Daria, if anybody needs any, like, uh, graphic design stuff, she's really good. She did it for a pretty reasonable price, too. So anything, like I said, any questions or anything about anything, feel free to ask at any time. So, like he was saying, though, new setup. I'm pr- that's like, that's almost what I'm more like, yes, I'm super excited to play D&D, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like, guys, like, <laughs> we're in this yeah. new room. Like, let's, the po- the possibilities are endless. We don't have to worry about having shivering voices in the winter when we're RPing. Yeah, right. right. And I feel like the sound's probably a lot better in here, too. Um, even like just using this mic right now, like I feel like our voice isn't like, I'm not saying it's like carrying, like echoing, but there's this, there's this kind of roundness to everything mm-hmm. where like before in the garage, there's all this dead space in the air. So the second you say anything, you feel super quiet, like you're not loud enough, right. but I feel like in here, everything's just a lot more, you know, sound and it's a mm-hmm. lot, it's a lot cozier. Like when we first For started sure. playing, we were like... We were close. Yeah, we were close. <laughs> no better way to put yeah. it than that. Sweating like a motherfucker, the yeah. AC running. Yeah, trying to play with the AC right next to us or turn it on and off or yeah. to hear like, important narrative things. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, please turn it back on. Turn it back on. We're getting hot, bro. Yeah. It's hot in here. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the table's already set to accommodate. Eight people. It'll yeah, work out pretty it well. was originally set up for eight. I think we only started with seven, though, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, but it just didn't make sense to make a table for yeah. seven. That's a, that's a lot. Yeah. So I was just like, yeah, we'll throw in eight trays and stuff, and stuff like that too. Like I really, I like making a bunch of like crafty shit. So if anybody has questions on the table, like how I built it, it was super easy. I think I did it for like less than two hundred bucks. And it, I think the most expensive part was from the previous table, and it's the legs, like the little brackets where the legs are sitting in. Dude, those are like 50 bucks for each one. <laughs> Jared bought every single one, and I was like, you're a legend. But then we used those for the last... We didn't need them for this one. I'm kind of glad we put them in, though, because I would not have been able to get the table up here because the mm. legs, you know, make it awkward to carry. But for those, like... The last table we had to collapse, so I was like, that made the most sense. Mm-hmm. But like I said, questions on that shit, questions on anything at all. And then eventually I'm going to have everybody's, like, Twitter handles and stuff up, like, when people, you know, start watching a little more. That way people can just, like, directly message everyone, and everybody in the group's, like, really cool and chill about that stuff. And I kind of jumped on the streaming and you know, recording bandwagon, like, really quick. Like, let's just do this. You know, yeah, I got to know where decided it. We're not, we're not trying to be the next critical wall, but we're definitely no. inspired by that. Oh, we are vastly inspired by all of them. That that show was. I haven't been able to watch it as much as I'd like to be watching it because of work, like working all day on Thursday. Like, there's just no way I can do it. So it's like, for me, I loved watching it live as opposed to like going back and seeing all the vods and stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, critical role, huge, yeah. huge yeah. inspiration. There's no way I could ever like. You know, and that's what's cool about Matt, too. He'll be like, dude, you're probably a better DM than I am. And he doesn't even say it to just say it. Like, he's genuine yeah. about it. You know what I mean? Like, he would just say that to anybody. Like, oh, I wish I could be as good as you someday. And it's like, I really feel like there's no such thing as, like, the greatest DM. You know what I mean? Because nobody's going to DM in the same way. It's just going to be dependent on, like, that DM and character interaction, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? If everyone at the table is having fun, then yeah. you're playing with the greatest DM. Yeah, then you're playing with the greatest DM ever, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's like, for me, recently, it's been a lot of, like, 
hey guys, just a just a little more recip. Just give me a little more reciprocation, and we'll be mm-hmm. we'll be a okay. So we're kind of dealing with that too. But hey, damn dude, we've been sitting here for almost an hour. That's, that's not bad. That's not bad. That closing on an hour. Yeah, that feels like a pretty decent time to kind of wrap it around. We mm-hmm. got about five minutes before we probably <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Any anything you want to talk about in five minutes? <laughs> I don't know if I can get through anything without going off on tangents or anything like that. But. I think as long as we keep it under an hour and a half, we'll be all right. Maybe fifty yeah. percent of the people that are listening to this stuff have already just left because <laughs> yeah. like these guys are fucking idiots. <laughs> but hey, for those of you yeah. that are still here, yeah. if anyone's there, we love. We that. appreciate you. Yeah, you're the best. Yeah. Nothing in the five minutes? No good? Any thoughts? I feel like I've just been rambling. <laughs> That's the best way to do it. Yeah. I mean, there's... I'd love to talk about some more uh, Apex things, but that's... Yeah. Let's get away a little bit on that. Man. He's, like, really cool. Too. And, like, the class that, like, we made, or subclass, class slash subclass, you know, whatever. We're not trying to divulge too much information here. Mm-hmm. But, like, I don't even like... I'm not saying like, but RP wise is way better. Like, yes, the mechanics and stuff are really cool, but it's like the mechanics of the class make the RP like elevated. Mm-hmm. So it's not a class built for. Like, I feel like that's pretty cool too because there's like classes in the handbook, and I feel like they're all. I'm not gonna say like general and basic, but they're like built for like a play style. If that makes sense, like it's like yeah. okay, you're a fighter, so you're like being like up in somebody's face, and I mean, it pretty much okay, plays on the classic hands. kind of just RPG kind of character tropes. Yeah, pretty much. exactly. Like World of Warcraft, exactly. Diablo, anything like that. Mm-hmm. But I feel like what you have is like, it's not tailored to a fight style. It's tailored mm-hmm. to some form of RP. Like you can you can take this kind of class, like subclass that you've built, mm-hmm. and just RP it in any way you can like imagine. And it's like, holy shit, like, this is really cool. Like, the first time, like, when you sent it to me, whatever day you sent it to me, and I started looking it over, I was like, holy shit. I was like, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, it's like, pretty much just out of the random, because at this point, I wasn't even making it to make a new character, because Shadow was still alive and everything. And Yeah, and you were having fun and everything, mm-hmm. playing him, and shit was going well. But it's, it's making homebrew things, it's, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I my entire I think I have like two pages worth of shit, and the shaman is like thirteen pages long, and that's not I don't even think that's including the spell pages. <laughs> it's like holy shit, yeah. and I have another uh, path that I'm putting on there too. So it's like there's the enhancement, the totems, and then the restoration. So I'm making like a healing kind of uh, spec to it. I feel like. Mine's got a long way to... The one I'm playing now still has a long ways to... to and that's the thing, too. It's like, we're not going to know until we until we actually delve into it and, like, do some mm-hmm. combat and stuff. Yeah. There's still some subclasses I'd like to make for it. Mm-hmm. Different than the one I'm using now, but I just try to more flush out the one I'm using now because it makes sense. Right. But... Mm-hmm. I was gonna say what else I'd add. Like, kind of yeah, things, I'd add, things but you I'd add, just... but then it's like, no, I can't say that because it's not even like it would just give it away, but it would kind of give it away. Yeah. Like you, you really don't want any information spilt at all. Yeah, it's definitely a, a big mystery in the party right now. Yeah, and Deleuze, sorry, bud, you <laughs> thought you knew, but there's no way. It had like two sessions. I think Jerry might have even said once, like, oh, I think I know what it is. And I was like, nope, <laughs> there ain't no way, buddy. Unless you hacked Shop's computer. <laughs> Went over there in the middle of the night, snuck in, opened his files yeah, up. Those are the two people that I would believe could get into yeah, that computer. Yeah, Jerry and Deleuze, that would, those would be the yeah. two. By the way, if uh, the person that's fucking with my printer is watching this, <laughs> fuck <laughs> off, dude. <laughs> oh, God. Just leave it at that. <laughs> just, just end it there. No, no context. Yeah, no, no context. But <laughs> all right. Anyways, uh, yeah, that's probably a good place to wrap this up, though. Uh, this was actually pretty fun. 
I would love to do yeah. this with everybody else and like get everybody get more people on yeah. others, not, others' opinions. Probably not eight at a time or yeah. nine, including me. We'd be able to do like you know four, or five at most. Maybe like once in a while, the whole gang has a special right, thing, a little special thing. Maybe if something really big happens in the yeah, the campaign. we just all want to like get through it. Yeah, right. yeah. Definitely get some a lot of people's opinions. I'm only one uh, one person out of the large group. Mm-hmm. All right. Anyways, like I said, my name is Billy Howe. Brandon Shaw. And this is Nights at the Not So Round Table. Thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you around. See you later. All right. Oh, shit. Still here, guys.